there, this is Jenny from Jenny's Garden and today we are going to be playing with oh, alcohol inks. Oh, I'm so excited. So I was over at a big box store the other day, a craft store, and they were having a clearance on a bunch of alcohol ink stuff. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. I was in paradise. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basics of alcohol inking and I may do some extra techniques. I don't know. You never know with me. I don't script these very well. I just get an idea in my head, get the supplies together and decide to show you what I think you should see or if you want to see it. So with alcohol ink, usually I try to have a silicone mat. So this is just a baking mat um, down on my table to help protect it because alcohol ink will stain anything porous or non-porous, it it'll stain. So I like to use the um, silicone baking sheet and then I can take a little uh, piece of uh, cotton or something with alcohol in it, scrub it up, and then use it somewhere else in a different design. So um, some of the designs that I started this morning are these beautiful blue tiles. Look, 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 look. Isn't that gorgeous? Pretty, 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 pretty. Just shimmering color. It's just beautiful. So these tiles are uh, acrylic little tiles, kind of like a plastic, you might want to say. They might be a white plastic. It doesn't really matter as long as it's non-porous. Uh, with alcohol inks, they um, stain, it's more of a stain rather than soaking into the paper. So when you're using watercolor paper, it soaks into the paper and into the teeth of the paper. So the teeth is what makes them porous. But for alcohol ink and non-porous surfaces are slick. So the alcohol ink has to get on it and dry real quick and kind of stain it. But the good thing about alcohol ink and your paper being non-porous is if you've ever colored too much and you get those little pills or fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzies in, in a painting, you don't get that with alcohol ink because it's very, very forgiving and your base is not soaking it up. It's just sitting on top of it. So some of the tools I use, I, I've got different colors of blue here. Uh, this is Brer Reese. They have a regular alcohol ink. They also sell watercolor in the same bottle, so be careful when you're reading. Make sure you're getting the right thing because if you put watercolor ink or watercolor paint on a non-porous system uh, uh, base, it's just gonna roll on it because it's water and it's non-porous. Okay, water makes it soak in. Uh, pores allows it to soak in. So this is Pinata Baja Blue. Uh, this is Tim Holtz Ranger Ink Silver Blue, and this is Marabou. It's called. Tian, Jitai, I don't know. Jishin, I don't know. So, um, it's, but it's a really cool blue. See, see how cool? Yeah. And then I've also got a couple of mixatives with me. So this is a silver mixative from Tim Holtz and Ranger Ink. It has uh, mica flakes in the bottom of it. So you wanna make sure whenever you're using it, you wanna shake it really good and make sure that little ball in there, you can hear it moving around freely. Don't shake it too hard because you're in your air bubbles. So just, you know, kind of give it a sideways shake like that. And then I've also got some white mixative. It's called Snowcap. So mixatives are opaque where alcohol inks are translucent. So the cool thing like this Snowcap will really lighten up that translucent and give it some opacity. And still you can really, the good thing about mixatives too is they make it thicker. So with alcohol ink, these things are like, they're just pigment floating in alcohol. And so if you look at your 91%, um, isopropyl alcohol, you see how liquidy that is. You're just adding these two things together and it's really liquidy, but, and I've got a leak. Cool. Okay. And then with um, the mixative, they're a lot thicker. So this one also has a little ball in it. So we want to make sure that it's getting good and, and mixed up. Uh, today I got my Enchanted Forest pencils. Yay. Crafter's Companion had an HSN, um, where is it? Yeah, you're looking at it. Had an HSN um, craft day the other day, and I saw these stencils. And since Pantone color of the year is classic blue, I was like, there's my stencil. And then it came in a set of these two other stencils I may be using later. But they're really cool. Really, really cool. Another thing about when I'm crafting, I always try to have a handy wipe near. And since these are non porous, that alcohol ink is just wiping right off with that alcohol in it. Okay, very good. See you later. All right. So here's the stencil. 
I look at it as bubbles, but they call it droplets, which is great. I love the cards and the backgrounds for the little people with the umbrellas and people with umbrellas. I just, I think they're so, I don't know, nostalgic and, 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 and timeless. So I love using those. So this is the droplet stencil that we're gonna be using today. I'm gonna to set that right there. And this is a um, design that I did earlier with it. And on this one, I posted the uh, directions on one of my Facebook groups. I'm gonna copy those over to my Facebook page from Jenny's Garden. So you can read up the instructions and it's not catching this light great, but it really looks cool. It's blue and silver, and the droplets are mainly silver and blue, darker blue, so it looks pretty good. I guess when I look on a, a regular camera, I'll like it better. Okay, it looks really good. Good, 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 okay. So a couple of other tools I keep around. I keep some tweezers around in case hair or something gets in, and I can pull it out because it will dry in there. Uh, cat and dog, you know, Jenny, <laughs> everyone has hair around here. And then I've got this puffer and what a puffer does is it puffs hair. Huh? So this one I found on clearance somewhere, you're supposed to put a pin in it and it will puff the ink onto your thing like a little uh, air, uh, uh, I wanna say air gun, that's not right. Y'all help me, air spray, spray, you know what I'm talking about where you do art with spray in air. Cannot think of the word. Okay, well, I'll think of it later. So, um, recently I was watching a video because a lot of people use a straw and they blow the alcohol ink around because it's very, very mobile, especially when it's thin and wet. So, um, I've seen them moving around the, uh, and I did it, I did it a couple times too. I even bought some silicone straws and I was like, that's really cool. But then when I started hearing more and more about it, you can actually breathe in those fumes of the alcohol ink when you're using the straw. And I didn't like that idea either. So I'd seen, I think Tim Holtz on one of his creativation videos had talked about how it's better to use a puffer. And so I was like, oh, I got one of those and I dug it out and it's been working great. Okay. Let's see. Um, so I like to use silicone. I found this little bowl somewhere. Oh, you know where I was? I was at Myers. And over in their kitchen department, down on the lower shelf, they had all these silicone little uh, pouring cups and everything, very, very cheap. And so that's where I found this little bowl at. And um, so I, I use this a lot. And then uh, these are just colors. I'll go back over here. I've got a plan for some of this stuff later. Okay. Oh, I wanna tell you about blending solutions. So let's put this here. Okay, always use 91% alcopropyl alcohol. Why 91%? because it's more alcohol than water. If you use 50%, then you're doing 50-50. And that's not what you want. You want more alcohol in it. You just want the water there to help move it around, but it will soak it. So you wanna be very careful with that. So that's one of the mixatives you can use. And I use that for oversprays a lot. You'll see in a few minutes. And then um, this is called a blending solution and all the major brands have their own blending solution. Am I doing that right? There we go. And so all major plant brands have their own blending solution. I have heard, uh, once again, Tim Holtz, safety man. I'm gonna start calling Tim Holtz safety. I like that. I like knowing about how to work with my different products safely though. And he said, never put blending solution in a spray bottle. Isopropyl alcohol, fine. You even notice they sell at Walgreens this way or any drugstore, not promoting anyone. But the, um, the blending solutions themselves have a polymer in them. And he said, if you put it in a spray bottle, that polymer can get in your lungs and coat your lungs. That's kind of what's happening with vaping right now, right? If they're using that vitamin E oil, it's coating the inside of the lung and we don't want that. So let's set those up. The other tools I've got with me are very simple ones. It's a dauber. Dobby, 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 dobby. So this dauber has a little, um, just a regular little sponge on it, nothing fancy. Most people use felt when they use alcohol ink because they like to throw their felt away after they're done. I rarely throw anything away until I've totally used it. So I will take the felt and I'll put it in here and then I'll pour some um, isopropyl alcohol in it and I've got more alcohol ink and then I can keep creating. So um, there's also, when I did the little, this little panel right here, I use this sponge. This is more of a foam dauber. So this is foam. And 
the thing I noticed about this, because I've worked with felt quite a bit, because that's the original thing they recommend with it, is, how to explain this? The alcohol ink seems to kind of slide on top of this, and then it soaks in, where when you're using felt, felt just holds it. So felt holds and releases it. This doesn't seem to release it as well. So I'm gonna see what happens when I stick it in alcohol tonight. <laughs> Uh, this little sponge is just a little open weave sponge. It should be very good. It'll, it'll soak up as much as, as it can. And then I told you about these little panels, right? Non-porous white panels. So we're gonna do those all at four at a time. And that way I can cover my whole stencil because these panels are three by three and my stencil six by six. So there's different ways that you can use alcohol ink. Some people will take it. We'll use this pinata right here. I always give it a shake. I think it's just habit to make things. So we'll drip, drip. Then I'm gonna drip some here. Another thing is I like about this, you never know what you're gonna end up with. I never knew these panels were gonna come out this pretty just with one coat of ink. I thought they were pretty amazing. Oh, can't, sorry. See how amazing they are? And they can still, we can just still do more to them because alcohol ink, once again, is very um, forgiving. So some people like to um, take an alcohol ink and put it in a little bowl. Or you could put it right on your, your mat. I just like the bowl because it doesn't, I'm very clumsy. <laughs> if you watch my videos, in fact, I saw a video a few minutes ago and you could hear things crashing in the background because I was reaching for something. I'm just a slob, not a slob, just, just clumsy. So then if I mix that up with my dauber and then I can daub it on. So this is gonna give it more of a um, natural flow. And this is gonna be more pointed, especially when you're using stencils. So if you want to just get within the stenciled area, this is the way to go. We're doing the background right now because now after that, we're gonna layer the stencil on top and start working from there. So we're gonna give that a little pat and see how forgiving this is. Look, I stuck some more alcohol on top of that blue and now it's a swirl. So then you could do that. You just can do really cool, fun things. So I'm gonna bring this one up so you can see it. See, it's all just swirly fun, funny swirl. So uh, let's take some of this Marbu, Marbu. Sorry, joggles if I said that wrong. Let's stick some of this on. And sticking within one color family, you can usually get some really amazing results. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I said that uh, Pantone's color of the year is classic blue. So this is a, a shout out to the color of the year, even though I don't think any of these say classic blue, they're all blues. So then I'm gonna stick some, this is the blending solution and see how it kind of reacts with it. And like whoosh, really flows, doesn't it? When you're doing bigger pieces, a lot of people will you'll pick them up and you can get it to move around to where you want to go. It's like that game with the ball in it where you're trying to keep it from going out of the going into the hole from coat going into the hole so you can get to the end. So they're really interesting, interesting shapes and, and colors and color combinations and swirls and drips and all kinds of fun stuff that you can get. This one, this one looks cool. Look at that color. Now don't fall in love with the color right away because what happens, it's gonna change. It is the perfect example as nothing stays the same until it's totally dry. So we're gonna stick some of these on. If I take my spray, Look at that. <laughs> I know, I'm goofy. Let me get this up to you. Look, look, isn't that cool? Because I'm spraying it. <laughs> okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab around, get all my white out of there. Not necessary, because I'll eventually probably, I just had one piece, I had a little piece of white in it left. Okay, so. Now what you can do is, if you don't want to wait, some people heat set up with the heat gun, or you can blow it and, oh gosh, I'm going to try to get you closer in. Hold on, let's see how this works. 
I don't have any to use my watch. Okay, now we're gonna pull that one down. So can you see how it moves it? Okay, let's do some of the snow cap on it. So snow cap is a white alcoholic mixative. And I think it's a mixative because it's got a little acrylic paint in it. I'm not sure, do not quote me. So if you're making a flower or something, you could have that for the center of your flower. Let's put a little blending solution in it. Look, it's so cool. It's so much fun to watch. You see how we're moving that? Oh, it's pretty. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. So let's put some more over here. And the good thing about alcohol ink too is you can really layer it up and get all these interesting striations of color. That's why I like to use it in my um, resin pores because it's translucent. And then it sits in the resonance like it's, <laughs> I guess it is floating in it. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, this one looks cool. Can you see it well? So much fun. I feel like I'm in the ocean. Okay, let's put some white over here. I'm gonna take you back out now that you see kind of how it flows and everything. So out we go. Are you proud of me for using my camera and trying to be a little more mindful of what I'm showing? This is the extender from Marabou. That looks like it. Pretty cool. I think that with using a straw, you get more control than using the puffer. But I tell you, I don't feel as out of breath or as swimmy headed as when I'm using a straw. So I think I'm going to stick with the puffer. The puffer. So if we take some of the silver mix, mix it up. You notice, boom, this is a good example of what metallic mixatives or metallic alcohol inks do, it sunk right to the bottom. See that? It, the blue almost um, covers it. But when you puff it and you start spreading it out, isn't that cool looking? Let me bring you back in for this one. Why don't I do this? This makes more sense. Let me turn it so you can see what I'm doing. So then you can almost shape it if you so desire with the air. And some people go, this is way too messy. 
it's so much fun. It is just a lot of fun. So enjoy the mess sometimes. It's like when we were kids, we were always having fun and playing and, and making things and making messes and everyone told us not to be messy and life is messy. <laughs> Zen from Jen. <laughs> How about that? Zen from Jen. That's hilarious. I just thought of that. Okay. Um, So these are pretty much dry. They're still a little tacky. The white is going to take longer because it's thicker. I'm going to pull you back out. I was going to make this a five minute video. It's just impossible, isn't it? Okay. I think um, Stephanie Barnard found that out when she was trying to do the three minute card or something. Now you want to watch something funky? I'm going to get close in on one of these when I do this. I do that one. Watch this. Oh, now that's interesting. I expected way more speckling, but the white really kept it from happening. So if you look at here, you can see where the alcohol hit it, and it almost like repelled the alcohol. Look at this one. See how all those cells created? Really funky monkey. So I like to put down a layer of colors, as you see. Put in just a little mix of not a lot because we're gonna be using more as we layer the color up. And then um, use my uh, one spray of regular alcohol. Ooh, this is moving great. Can you see that move now with that regular alcohol on it, the isopropyl? I'm starting to call that 91 IA. 91 IA. Now get our stencil, where do I put the stencil? In my lap, good place for it. So if you notice this stencil already has alcohol ink on it, it was whitish. Doesn't matter, good thing about alcohol ink is it's not like paint where it gets into the corners and crevices, it just stains it. So that's not gonna hurt at all. Now we're gonna set this on top of our three by three blocks. Give it a little tap down, maybe take the bottom of your... Just to make sure it's contacting. That's why I leave it just a little wet when I add this on. Sometimes if it's too wet and it dries under there, you'll rip the design off, but I found this very forgiving so far. Okay, so I like to, when I start daubing, I like to put my mixture together inside my little bowl. So how are we gonna do this? Let's put some sailboat bloom in. I might have you two in, sorry. Let me, sorry about that. I get caught up in creating, okay. There we go. So, um, that sailboat blue in there. Put some blending solution in. And this dauber, already has blue on it, try to stick your sponges with the same colors unless you're intentionally mixing. So like if you have blue down and then you wanna to try to make green, you can add yellow to it and then you can make green in certain areas. And I might show you that in a minute. So I'm just gonna daub these together and start lightly daubing. Less is more because you can always add more. Can you see what I'm doing? Apologize for the shadows, it's just the way it is. I have to sit beside my fireplace with the fireplace open, the door open right now because of venting. We're working on a venting system for my studio. So, just gonna dub that. Dub, 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 dub. Dub, 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 dub. Now, the reason I do this layer like this is it's going to help cement my design in as I build up. So, puffer. 
this one I'm just trying to get air on it. I'm not trying to move anything. I'm just pulling it. Some people take a heat tool or a small hair dryer. Um, you can do that too. I just don't like the noise. I'm getting to that age where noise hurts my ears a lot. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, let's see. So right now, if you notice, and I'm going to pull my bowl up so you can take a look at the inside. It has um, almost dried alcohol ink in there. This is great to use when you're trying to do a, let's get red. Here's my blue. I keep my paint brushes by color. And so if you want to dab some color, you can do it with a paintbrush like this. Or if you wanted to add some mixative in. See how thick the mixative is compared? It's really thick compared to the, the alcohol ink. So I'm going to put some blender solution in it. And I think what we'll do is we use sailboat blue. This is, no, wait. We used one of those. They're both the same kind of bottle, so I'm going to use this Marbu and mix it with the mixative. So then, let me see if you can see me. See, I can set that right on there because it's almost, almost dry and I'm using a silicone bowl. So I'm going to mix this up. Okay. And then if I like squish it against the side and make it so it's not soaking wet, I can paint into the cells a lot better. So this guy will paint into his cells and then you can look at his friends once we finish the rest of the techniques and you can see the difference by painting a layer of um, different color or different mixative. So I never know what to call the inside of a stencil. Is there a technical word for that? We need to find out. I know that the outer edges is called negative space once you put it down. So I just go paint inside the open spaces of the stencil. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is how I do it. Like everything else in my life, I only went to school for journalism. I didn't go for anything else. So I just have fun learning and listening to other people. Do they call that a Rhodes Scholar? I don't think so. Um, Jack of no trades, Jack of many trades, master of none. Okay, and let's pull that up. Can you see where that mixative is kind of floating on top of the alcohol ink? Now that one I got way too wet. I'll probably have some bleed underneath it. Bleeding is where you get uh, media underneath the stencil in the negative space area. For this project, it doesn't matter because this is more of a See? So let me tell you, if you notice, I just knocked over this mixative and it had this uh, um, Ranger and I think they've spoiled me because these are the first um, types of alcohol inks I used. And whenever I knock over a competitor, so to speak, or another type, look at the difference of those tips. This one is wide open. So when I knock something over, I'm on my hands and knees cleaning up ink. <laughs> So also, I was listening to a, a Tim Holtz video one time and he was saying, the way this is built, it can't take air in, so they're less likely to dry out. So I thought that was interesting. Hey, let's do some of these. And we'll put some over here. See, that's the good thing about this too, is you don't have to have any set plan. You can just play. So now I'm gonna hit it with another thing of spray alcohol. Oh, that did not spray too well. That was a dribble thing of spray alcohol. And where's the puffer? Can you see how that's starting to spread out that mixative? And when I sprayed it, I got some on this side oh, red. So I'll paint these back in. 
And if you get so sick and tired of what you're doing, you don't like it, you can take a cloth and a, uh, alcohol and wipe it off and start all over. It's really cool stuff. I do all kinds of like little white plastic picture frames with alcohol ink. And it just gives it such a vibrant, pretty look. Might get these into my face. This is where the alcohol fell. So we'll clean it up there. I'll also take this stencil later and get a piece of waterproof paper and spray some alcohol on it and then get it where I'll lift off the stencil on and put it on the paper. And that way I'm saving that pigment too. I'm always looking for different ways to save my pigment. When I finish with this sponge, I'll take it off, put it in here and put some, um, some water in it. And then I'll take the leftovers and I'll pour them onto a piece of paper just to get some really cool backgrounds. I like to make my really funky monkey um, die cuts that way. So I've got some hummingbirds coming out pretty soon that I'm just so thrilled with the way they look. They're beautiful. But I don't wanna post them until we have our hummingbird class with Stamps of Life. Stephanie has a class coming up in February. So I'm, it's an online class. It's the only thing I can do right now because I travel so much for work. Okay. Okay, so the big reveal. Okay, how are we gonna do this so you can see it good? Oh no, my watch is acting wacky. Okay, so I think I'll pull it from this side. Oh, oh that looks cool, okay. Gonna set 